Hello, everybody. What up? All right, so the poll, Corin. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to tell you right away what I what Which, I tweeted. We haven't had a poll in a while. I People know. People were saying, bring the polls back. We just brought them back. Um, so I know what the answer is going to be. The question mm-hmm. is, how big is the victory? Because I put Cheez-Its versus Cheese Nips. Cheez-Its versus... Ch- I'm trying to even think what the fuck a Cheese Nip is. Oh, you're bugging. You don't know what a Cheese Nip is? Cheese Nip is... Cheese nip is the is the ball, right? Pause. No, it's it. They're like they're like Cheez Its, except I think they're like a knockoff of Cheez Its. Oh, okay, yeah. Then then I know what it is. Right. The question Cheez-Its, is how, how Cheez-Its big Cheez-Its is the It should be a hundred to zero. So it pro- it's going to be overwhelming. Okay, like Cheez Its is going to crush, and it's I know that. It's going to be in the nineties. And I know that it it might be in the nineties. It's definitely going to be over seventy. Oh, without a question, it's going to be over 70. I think it's, it's going, going to be, be over 70. 90 to like... It, anyone who chooses cheese nips is just choosing that shit because they want to be different. Now let me tell you my story. Because there's a reason why I'm asking this question, even though I know what the answer is going to be. Because okay. I even had to think what cheese nip yeah, is. Yeah, I know. You yeah, what's to, your story? But the, I think most people will know without like having to look it up. Okay, here's, here's the story. Mm-hmm. So, and actually to tell the story, I have to tell another story. So, I... <laughs> I've been sho- I've been grocery shopping recently while I'm hungry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now everybody says don't do that. I used That's to the be worst move. I used to be somebody who says don't do that. But mm-hmm. here's the thing. When I grocery shop when I'm full, mm-hmm. I undershop. So like I don't get enough shit. So then I said, well, my bad. I'm I'm, I'm like in the background is the bachelor and He's just got a handful of ass right now on the screen, and is like that automatically took my attention. You got distracted by booty, P booty, okay. booty judge. Um, yeah, booty. Ju- so, un- yeah, no, under shopping is a bad thing. You don't under want that. shopping is a problem that I've had consistently. By the way, this is a weary um, breakfast burrito, and I yeah, just I took that. ketchup and poured it on top of it. Oh, I feel like that shit is gonna give you that stomach pain where like it's just that pain that is non-stop nah nah that shit doesn't look like it'll bring any joy to your stomach like your stomach is looking up at you right now like nah we can't take that shit son i used to have this every day (laughs) but but at 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 nine o'clock at night no usually in the day but i haven't had dinner stomach is looking at you right now like nah dog I don't think, and then like some cheese shit just sort of came out the side of it. You're projecting with your weak ass stomach right now. If I had that shit right now, in four hours in the middle of the night, I'd be hunched over on the ground in the bathroom in the yes, dry you sweat. But that happens with, with so much shit with you. I, I never know. have that problem. My stomach's like a, a fucking, I was going <laughs> to Kentucky you like- Derby winner. <laughs> I was gonna say like gridiron challenge winner or some shit, but I don't even know what that is. So I just I thought you were Kentucky say, like Derby. the Kentucky Derby like racetrack. Like oh, and I just pictured like a muddy ass day and it just being like like the horses have been trembling on that shit and it's like the end of the race and they haven't like like taken care of it and it just looks all like like <laughs> diarrhea y and shit like that, and that's your stomach. It's just like <laughs> I like made the warrior. opposite point when I was trying to say my shit is strong. And my shit is like a perfectly like strawberry covered field of like nothing ever has gone wrong on it. Like it's been like catered and tended to and like watered and flowered and like there's a farmer that tends to that shit every day. No, so like farmer. when like so like when one shit happens to it like if like like a swarm of mosquitoes come to it, like the whole farm gets fucked up. Yeah. Whereas your shit is like you could have mosquitoes, you could have like shit flying around. And I like, got I got a dude in a mask with a chainsaw in the corner yeah. just chilling. I wonder yeah. how that happened. Do you think you just ate like nasty? Like I probably ate nasty shit growing up. How, why do I have such a sensitive stomach? You and I have always had similar diets, but my stomach I don't know. My stomach's never been a problem. I know a lot of people with sensitive stomachs, and it, it sucks. It sucks. Like you got the worst. Yeah, because I, I couldn't eat that shit right now. Like if I was at your crib and you're like, you want one? I was like, I, I, I can't. To be honest, it look of- it looks a lot grosser than it is. Like it's actually not bad tasting. Um, but I still would recommend you not eating it because there's a chance you'd be 
You but it doesn't even look like you've like evenly dispersed the ketchup on that shit. It almost just like you just like ran a packet over it. Yeah, like that. Kind of did. I just did like a line. See, I would have went the opposite route. If I was eating that, what I do now. If I wasn't it, rushing, I would have put it on the plate. But I was just like in a rush. I was like. And I just yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so what I'll do now, I rarely will like. So if you open up that burrito, it's a wrap. You know, you're not going to get it folded back to the normal shape that it is. So what I do is I'll, I'll, I'll take a small bite in the top. And I do this with my Jamaican beef patties now. And then I'll take the ketchup packet and sort of, you know, put the ketchup on my next bite. And then like eat that, put ketchup on the next bite, eat that, and gradually keep going down and That's down and down. That's similar to what I did. But at that, I feel like you get too big of a ketchup bite on that. No. Because it's all in the middle, no? It's re- I mean, it depends how much ketchup you like. I'm a medium to a lot of ketchup kind of guy. So this Same. is like a perfect amount for me. Okay. Um, Wait, go back to your point of so you can't undershop. Okay, yeah. So let me tell the story. So, um, I made the decision now I'm going to choose to go to the grocery store hungry every time because I do a better, more thorough shopping when I do it. I mean, I also get a bunch of shit that I shouldn't get, but that's a small price to pay for having like a full ass shopping. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. So like, wouldn't you, you'd be more inclined to buy like some, some Cheetos or some shit because you're hungry but Whereas, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, if you don't care, then, I mean, as long as you're not buying too much unhealthy stuff that, like, you're not getting, like, nutrients and shit because you're just thinking. No, it's I'm almost not like, getting only junk food. I'm getting, like, a decent amount of junk food plus regular shit. But, yeah, like, that, it's, it's feast or famine for me. So if I go and I'm not hungry, I'll get, like, all super healthy shit and then I don't eat, like, 30% of it. And then there's nothing worse than the feeling of throwing out food. Like, you feel so stupid when you're like, I got this fucking yogurt and I didn't eat it. So. Yeah, that's a good point. I've thrown away a lot of food just because, like, I have yeah, just bought it unnecessarily. Yeah. So I decided I'm just going to go when I'm hungry. And everything I get, I know will be on point. Because when I'm hungry, I, yeah, can, you're, zone, you're, I can zone yeah. in to, like, oh, I want that, 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 and that. And like I yep. said, some of the stuff's healthy. Some of the stuff's not healthy. But at least it's a full shopping, and I feel, like, accomplished, right? So, yeah. So, anyway, this is what happened. So, I was in the middle of one of those shopping sprees, <laughs> and I... My mind just went to Supermarket Suite. Oh, my God. I remember. They always used to be on, like, whenever I was not in school, that was on. Like, I'm, was I was such missing a good school. show for some reason. Why was that such a, I never, like, a renownedly liked show? Oh, I you didn't like even, it? I, it's not even that I didn't like it. It's not that I didn't like it or did like it. It's just the show you would put on when you're missing school because you're pretending Supermarket to be Supermarket Sweep? Sick. Yeah. I thought be- that came on that, that came on while we were in school. I thought it was like some like 6.30 maybe after dinner shit. I feel like I watched that shit at like 11 a.m. on the WB or on like the Channel 3, which oh. had like this shitty blurriness. No, I feel like. I definitely watched it in on that channel. Maybe the I was day- watching the reruns or some, something, but yeah, yeah, there might have been some reruns on like that Channel Three shit. But during the day when I was in school, it would, or when we were in school, I feel like it was, it would be like the judge shows. Like Maury would say by the bell in the morning. Then there would be maybe Jerry Springer at like ten or eleven. Then after Jerry Springer, would be maybe one of the um. No, after Jerry Springer would be Price Is Right because Price Is Right would be from like eleven to twelve. Mm-hmm. And then there was a there was a lapse between twelve and like two. It would just be all the like um, days of our lives and weird like you know, Channel Seven soap opera shit. I am so impressed by you knowing like legit the miss the school schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what it would be. But that, there would be that that leap from twelve to like two after Price Is Right was over that you couldn't really find shit to watch. It'd be like weird infomercials and shit like that. But then at two. Would be like like Judge Judy would come on, and like Judge Million, and that would hold you over to like four, when four <laughs> would take you to four. I think you could start going to like ESPN, and they would start breaking out new <laughs> shit that wasn't just rerun of Sports Center from the night before. Oh, I hate it when they do the reruns. That's what I'm saying. Oh shit, the thing froze. Connection was lost. There was a problem with the network. 
Oh shit, you're back. That there was weird. Go. Yeah. So so four would be the end of rerun Sports Center, and they would start bringing out like outside the lines, and maybe like at four thirty, part of the interruption around the horn, and then six o'clock Sports Center would come on. So like that's when the shows would start getting live. You again. had you when you miss school, you definitely watch TV all day. That's all I did. All day. Like, yeah, like <laughs> that's all the fuck I did. I mean, like Jerry Springer was my shit. Well, no, yeah, I'm not going to go through the rundown again, but I might have missed like NBC watching the weather for a little bit after Saved by the Bell. Damn, you just broke it down for everybody. Um, but I that always saw, shit, I always I saw the supermarket sweep on the- on that weary channel on the like the blurry channel is oh, when I always I, saw it. I remember it. It definitely was on like um like the Food Network or some shit like that. And I remember watching it, I think, like, after dinner at, like, 6.30 and, like, seeing it. But, like, that show used to get me so hyped because I would always – I don't know. I I never went grocery shopping, but I think I just got a thrill out of watching people having the freedom to buy whatever they want in this huge store. You know, like, you sort of get a thrill at, like – Well, no, it's not even that. It's it's the – when when they do packaging right and you got all these options, that – that but actually but isn't there get, something with like like them running around with all this freedom like there's so much stuff that these people can buy what are they going to choose for me it wasn't like, the freedom for me I'm just a sucker for a good package pause <laughs> 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 but I mean I mean like uh and, and this gets back to the story so I'm walking down the aisle and mm-hmm. I saw this like bright orange box mm-hmm. and the bright orange box was like like the perfect shade of orange where it caught my eye. Like I this, know exactly. I know cheese nips now just by that boom. definition. So yep. I, go, I go, what is that? I see cheese nips. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's just like the budget cheese it. So I'm not even going to fucking. And then I walk past it and I'm like, I'm getting that shit. And I grab it. Okay. Now, so, isn't the box sort of like an explosion too? Yes. There's like a, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. There's like an explosion on the box. Yeah. So, um. So I was like, I'm getting these knowing damn well that I like Cheez-Its more. Mm-hmm. I, with that in mind, I'm like, the, the box is so on point, I have to reward you for the box. Damn. like That's, that, that's like loyalty. That's You'd how, be a sucker at one of those uh, focus groups because they'd be like, which toothpaste packaging do you like? And they'd be like, this one will actually fix your teeth. This one is just a pretty box. And you'd be like, give me the pretty box. That's right. I'd be <laughs> like, that's a beautiful color. I picked that one. <laughs> They'll be like, "Sir, it's this is the wrong product. I don't care. I'd like it, please." Um, so I bought the cheese nips, and so be, because of the box, that because of the box, I knew da- I, I knew when I was buying it, like, "Oh, cheese nips are better." But let me give these a shot. Was my Damn. thinking like I'm gonna give these a shot because the box is so on point? So I started eating them, and I was like. They stepped up their game since the last time I had them, or I, it's either they stepped up their game, or I, like, having grown, and the last time I had cheese nips, I was probably, like, 14 or some shit. Yeah. I was like, these are actually really good. So, here's my take on it. Cheez-Its are, they're the original, they're the best, nobody can do Cheez-Its. Yep. But, cheese nips are actually... A close second. So I'm not saying cheese nips are better than cheese its, but what I am saying is they get a bad rap, son, and they deserve better than what they've gotten. Now, I know that cheese its is going to win in the poll for Mm -hmm. sure, Mm -hmm. but I'm curious to see by how much. I'm curious if it's 80%, 90%, whatever it might be, because then I know that all those motherfuckers, like none of them have probably had cheese nips in a hot minute because they're actually really on point now like they're actually really good now that's a good point so people are just voting because one cheese it's is the bigger name and that's usually what everyone buys that's just the more universal cheese cracker type shit where you're saying is if you give cheese nip that chance again that shit is gonna you're gonna be like oh what the fuck why haven't i been buying these shits and and that shit is that that would like if everybody who's about to vote in this poll had to try cheese its and cheese nips again, then I guarantee you the the final numbers would be like but 60, here's my 40. It wouldn't be 80, 20. It would be like but, 60, 40. But cheese its have never done some shit to me that I would even like 
give cheese nip the benefit of the doubt to try them. Like, you know, like cheese, it has never steered me wrong. Like they've had good commercials. I hear shits you. Are funny. Their I, food is banging. I hear you. So, but if you're at, if you're hanging out with me and oh, you, you see me in, the in my kitchen, yeah. you'll be like, Oh, because the box will kind of get you, too. You might try to front like the box is not going to get you, but you might see that bright-ass orange box and be like, okay. And then you'll have some and be like, oh, all right. I didn't know it was like this. I think the bright orange box used to make me think that those shits were more like artificial. I think I was turned off by the bright orange box. Oh, you are super bugging. And I'll tell you why. Because I know for <laughs> sure, because you've said it before, too. You're like, damn, why is it that Fox News has the best, like their colors are on point. But That's you turn on point. like CNN or you turn on MSNBC and their colors are not on the same level as Fox News. So, That's you know, good... somewhere in your mind, you get it about the color issue. Like, yeah, you are I said on this the, the other same day as me with that. I said this the other day about um, I was watching and I like Ellen's show just because I don't know. I'm a fan of Ellen and like I, I like the show. She has big time guests on, but I don't like Steve Harvey. But for some reason, I'll always watch his show. And it's because he's got like a colorful ass set. There you go. Looks, it looks clean, and it's like there's like <laughs> these like refreshing colors, and and that's why I'll still watch Arthur to this day because it's like mad colorful. And I don't. I used to really like the Doug Funny episodes that were on ABC on one Saturday morning because the shit was mad crisp. It was mad clean. The colors were just perfect, like perfectly colored. Whereas if you watch the old Dugs, which are still great on Nickelodeon. It was like the colors were sort of dull and like it was like pixelated and shit like that. I used to be a fan of Rocco's Modern Life because like they used to have like turquoise colors and like Heifer used to be like this nice like yellowy and it was just crisp and clean. Like I was never a fan of Ren and Stimpy because their colors were sort of dull and like faded and shit like that. Like that's an iconic show to people. But to me, like the colors were whack. They got to study this because – same thing with Beavis and Butthead. Like, we can't Beavis be the only ones. I, like, I, I don't really rock with the old Beavis and Butthead because the colors were sort of faded and shit like that. We can't be the only ones uh, who feel this way. Because let me tell you something. YouTube mm-hmm. used to have an option called color correction. Mm. And any U- OG YouTubers will know the deal. If you, I, I think you had to be a channel that hit a certain level before you get that option. Like, you'd have mm-hmm. to have a certain number of subscribers before you get that option. But the OG YouTubers will know what I'm talking about. And color correction, all you have to do, so you upload a video, mm-hmm. you click color correction, and it'll hit, it'll make immediately like fix like, it and make crispify it crispify your shit, crisp it so that that like. And I don't know what happened. They got rid of that feature because I guess not enough people were using it, and I was devastated. I was like fuck because i loved it it made my videos look just a little crisper and mm-hmm. whether or not people know it i actually think that that made like more people subconsciously f- like the show or or, or want to watch it a little bit longer maybe stay that extra two or three minutes yep. because the colors were so on point that you're like oh wow yep. so i was mad when they took that away but there's got to be something to that dog there's got to be 100%. like like, they got to study that because I don't know what it is, but that is so true. That seems like there's a lot of people who would agree with what we're saying. Some of us will call us idiots and be like, no, nah, I don't I don't notice that. But No, nah, but deep down, they don't know it, but, but they're watching shit that's – like, that's why – I mean, I can't get behind any black and white shit. Like, don't they do try it, and – They do it with movies to set a mood. Like, they will do – some movies will have, like, a certain tint to yeah. make it seem more dreary. So they'll give it like a gray tint or like a bluish tint so that everything just looks more dull. Yeah. You know, but that, yeah, that's, that. it's a strategy. It's just like a cinematic strategy. So there's obviously well, something boy, to it. You know, Adam, my uh-huh. boy, Adam, mm-hmm. he worked for a company who specifically did color correctioning on movies. There you go. Yeah. So like they would enhance the colors. So like you watch it and it just looks brighter or, you know, crisper, like it, it like it's noticeable and I don't know like I'm sure I like the show Arthur I don't know why I'm so like why I could still watch Arthur and mm-hmm. I really enjoy Arthur but I think something with the colors got to do with that shit like I don't really like Barney some of Arthur's colors are on point yeah I, I, I don't know I think Arthur also has like a good there's like a good script to that shit too it's He's not just doing it's on like PBS right I, I just cover a story about it where like in Arthur's what's that Mr. Ratburn is gay. 
that's the the story was that like in Arkansas PBS affiliate refused to run the episode because there was like a gay wedding in the episode. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, well, what the, if they would play, you know damn well that if there was like a straight character getting married in Arthur, they yeah. would let the episode play. So for them 100%. to say, no, we're not going to run it because it's a gay wedding, because like, oh, what are we going to tell the kids? It's like, what the f- fuck you, man. Like, this is the problem. Like, you're still backwards Ugh. and you're still bigoted. Like, as long as you would let, because if the argument was, hey, that's adult stuff and we don't want the adult stuff being in the cartoon, well then, okay, you would have to say, no, I won't run a straight wedding either because it's a wedding and that's adult yeah. stuff. But you know they wouldn't say that. You know they're only saying it because they're gay, which is fucked yeah. up. Yeah. That was, um, so I just watched, um, Ellen on, she did a chat with, uh, David Letterman on his Netflix thing, Mm -hmm. which was a really good interview. And then I watched Kanye's thing, which which we can get into also. He only gets the biggest guests. Like, well, he just had Tiffany Haddish that I started watching too. And I'm not really a fan of hers. She's got a very interesting story, but he got Tiffany Haddish and I was sort of like, you can't have Jay-Z. Yeah. It was like Obama, (laughs) Jay-Z. Bangers. God. (laughs) Yeah. For real. Like Jesus Christ. Like. And then Tiffany Haddish, I was like, uh, come on, she could have she could have made it on season three or four or some shit. <laughs> like, she can't follow Ellen. Like, but Ellen was talking about how when she came out, she was gay, and they started talking about it on her TV show. They didn't want to run the TV show um, because of that topic. But I'm thinking in my head, like, you know how many people like would have tuned into that shit just because they were like curious to see didn't what they, the story they did it was? eventually, right? Didn't they do it? They did it I on think her they show. Did. Her old show, her sitcom. I think they did it, but what she said was they ran the episodes without like like a lot of advertisers and like were pulling out and they weren't getting any publicity or anything like that. So they sort of let the show die and that's when it, it was canceled. So like they, they let it run its course for whatever. Oh, so you're saying hour. advertisers pulled out once she did it? Yes, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, and then um, I'm thinking like those those probably were like the best episodes because it was just like a genuine ass person being authentic. You know. Well, let me tell you, I actually remember when that happened when she like came out, Dude. and the one thing I'll give her a lot of credit for because I'm not the biggest Ellen fan. I think she's a little too like centrist in her politics, and that kind of mm-hmm. annoys me. But the one thing I'll give her massive credit for is that the way that you make average Americans you know, basically understand that homophobia is wrong and that you should be totally okay with gay people and gay people should be allowed to get married and all that stuff. The way you do that is to humanize gay people and to not, and to make them realize like, oh, they're just like me and my neighbor and like, what? there's no problem here. There's nothing wrong here. And mm-hmm. Ellen was on the front lines of that in being just a likable, relatable person that made average people go, well, you know, I wasn't, I, I, I'm not for gay marriage, but I, I wouldn't want to tell Ellen she can't get married to who she loves. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. she, she made it like, she made it normal. She made it acceptable because she's a likable person and she came yeah. out and yeah. I, that, see, that's when it, it, in my mind, that's when it was like actually super brave when she did it. Cause it was at a time where you got to remember, like now you look at the polls on gay marriage, it's like even a lot of conservatives have given up and they're just like, yeah, okay, gay marriage, fine. It's like, I don't know the numbers anymore, but it's over 60%. Like, the public mm-hmm. is just on on this, the side of gay marriage. But you go back to, like, 2005 and it's not even a majority favored. Never mm-hmm. mind going back to the 1990s. Like, nobody was talking about it back then. Yep. So, you know, we've made a lot of movement on an issue like that. And a lot of that has to do with the culture and the way that you influence American culture is through stuff like TV and, and, and music and, and or like celebrities. advertisements and stuff. She said like the biggest thing is like people don't, people don't see it. So you don't see a billboard with, you know, two men on it or something like that, or a billboard with two ladies kissing or like people kissing on TV. Like, so people don't know what it looks like, you know? So that's like, true, but it's gotta be. And here's the thing that, that, that makes, that means the most. It just has to be genuine. It just has to be like it can't be forced because once yeah. anything is forced, people will say, fuck you. So it's, right. just, it's got to be kind of genuine. And then people go, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, no, no problem with that. That's what's up. Yeah, I think to your point is like she didn't really and not like to, like someone who did like she didn't shove it down anyone's throat. No pun intended. Like she didn't. She just came out 
and like was like, yeah, I'm gay. Like, what's wrong with it? You know, like and she wasn't like she became a huge activist for it because, you know, that's what people like put like sort of like positioned her to be that like speaker for gay people or whatnot. But like she was just like, this is just who I am. And to your point, people were just like, OK, yeah, that's fine. You're funny. Like, you know, like there's you're just being you. Yeah. And that's why she sort of is so likable, you know, is because she was just being herself. She's being authentic. Yeah, that and that and that's the way you move the needle, and that's the way you change minds is to make people go, "Oh, you, oh, that's what a gay person is." Like they thought whatever they were thinking, it made no sense. And then you see a regular person, and you're like, "Oh, okay, all right, yeah, that, that's cool, no problem with well, that." That goes to anything. Like, what, like if I'm doing, uh, if I'm just working like some manual labor shit, and like. Someone's trying to tell me to do something like, you know, you all work hard or do all this stuff. But like if they're actually just doing it and like I see them grinding and doing whatever they want me to do, I'll be like, all right, I respect that person because he's just doing his shit. He's just passionate about whatever the fuck he's doing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm also that. a little bit annoyed by the people who who are late to 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 get on board with it and then they mm-hmm. try to act like they're brave. Like if somebody comes out today. Mm-hmm. It's like we like we're past it. Nobody cares who you're fucking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's there's this thing now where it's like trendy or whatever. And I mean, it's still good that people like are you know come out because I'm sure there's still a lot of other people that don't feel comfortable like coming out. You know? I, or there's like I mean, certain yeah, situations. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, I'm I'm naively assuming that everybody's already at like my stage of cultural acceptance or whatever. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, okay, we get it. Like, it's, yeah. we're we're past that now. Like, just yeah, yeah, yeah. coming out and being gay, it's not like, like, oh. But you're right. It actually, we're not really at that point yet. I mean, no. we're going to be at that point. But right now, it's not the case because not everybody's already at the point where I'm at where I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Like, you know, you know, this is this is how it's important. So you have to have people in different areas of life come out to be the first in that area of life so that then like you know what i'm saying like um there there's speculation that a couple certain nba players are gay mm-hmm. but has any nba player came out um yeah there was the one um but he was like a he wasn't a like a big time star uh um amici john amici i think his name was i don't even remember him. yeah he played on like the orlando magic he was just like a bald dude who sort of looked like a gremlin a little bit but like he came out <laughs> as gay i think he was from great britain or something like that but, but like, like nobody it's not like like vince carter is coming out and saying he's gay or something that's like that. what i'm saying no. you have to have like some trailblazers in all the different fields where everybody goes oh so it's a thing that's throughout society and all these different professions with all these different people and it's totally normal because yeah. it's still taboo in some respects, in some oh, places. 100%. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So, anyway. Um, so, I got to ask this question because it popped in my head, and I think it's... I'm curious what your answer is. How long is it socially acceptable to keep underwear for? I want to say, like, is forever an answer? <laughs> like, Well, that's my answer, and that's... I feel like I've got shit that's got holes in it that my white underwears probably have some like doo doo stains in them. There's underwear. I used to have a pair of Rugrats underwear that I got. <laughs> I think I got them from a secondhand store. Which my number one rule is never buy underwear. Like I'll buy everything. Why would from you Big get Will. underwear secondhand? Son? See, this is I I wouldn't and I don't. And my rule is you can't buy underwear from a secondhand store. But I think I was in middle school. And I went to like some boutique, like vintage thrift shop with my mom. And I think I saw a pair of Rugrats underwear there, like boxers. And I was like, I need those, mom. And I bought them and I had them for a hot minute. I don't have them anymore. I wish I did. Oh. But I keep underwear for years and years and years until eventually Molly's like, just buy, they're like seven bucks. Like, just buy a pack of like See, six. Molly keeps you on track, man. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for Molly, you'd be a total mess. Because oh, yeah. that's like, I have underwear that I've literally had since middle school. Yeah. And the thought never crossed my mind. Like, hey, maybe I should get rid of these. Why? Nope. Why? They're perfectly fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong and with them. 
it's weird because I mean, pants get dirty and you, you know, after time, I guess you never really outgrow some boxers because they're always going to stretch. They usually have that elastical stretch. That's what I'm saying. And and the sizes, I just, you know, I wear boxers only. I don't wear briefs. Yeah. So for me, it, that, I could fit into medium or large and I'm good. But I, for some reason, my thighs, I feel like are sort of like fat. Not fat, but like <laughs> I don't want to sound Corin, like, a, like uh, Corin a just called girl himself thick as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I've got like some like some diesel thighs that like I've got a pair of boxer briefs that I had to cut them a little bit because they like were hugging my thighs too much. You had That's to probably cut because boxer I had them briefs. since like second grade. Damn. See that I would have just thrown out. Like if they rip, like I've had some that have ripped and I threw them out. But I've had no, it, like I've got, I've got phew, boxers with like OD holes in them shits. Well, it and depends how bad the one. rip is. Like one time I was wearing them and the whole, like the whole shit ripped, and by the time I took them off at night, they were just like two separate parts to them. <laughs> I think I still probably would have rocked. Them nah, there. it was literally impossible for them to be worn anymore, so I threw it out. But that. But it's funny because the ones that that happened to also were the middle school ones. Like, literally, oh, yeah. they fucking straight up tapped out, dog. They were like, enough, enough. <laughs> they committed fucking suicide. <laughs> rest in peace, me. Throw me away, you asshole. Oh, imagine, like, a Toy Story for boxers, and those shits are just like, like, they were like the old trusty boxers in the draw, and, like, every day they were just like, Man, when am I when am I gonna rip? And he's like, today's the day. I'm just gonna I'm gonna end it. <laughs> I actually do need to buy more boxers too. That see, that's the thing. I never think of like the practical shit to buy. I'm never mm-hmm. like, hey, I should get some more socks, even though I rip socks like every other week. Yep. But I never think like, oh, I should get some more socks. No. Yeah. With with boxers, I went to like so I went to Hebrew school back in like 88 and this was like when I was 12, 13 when everyone was getting bar and bat mitzvahed and they would always give these giveaways at the bar and bat mitzvah. Like, I don't know, people would do like just weird like gift bags or something. But like this one girl, her name was Jackie. She gave away a pair of like these aqua blue boxers and it said like Jackie's bat mitzvah on them. I think if I go to my draw, I might still have them. No. I swear. And wow. I, I might have thrown them away because they ripped, but I still used to wear them just because, like, they were a pair of boxers in my rotation. Wow. Yeah. It's wild. I, I'm actually curious. I'm going to check after the podcast if I still have those joints in there. Wow. But, That's so crazy. I had, yeah. I had those blue joints. I want to go check if I have those shits real quick. I've actually thrown away like I've moved a bunch and every time I moved I did I had I scaled down just as a matter of like making it easier to move so mm-hmm. I would throw out shit that's like or donate stuff that's like oh I never really wear this shirt anymore I never really wear these pants anymore yeah so I've actually always kind of whittled down that stuff but I never did it with boxers and I never did it with socks in well, the because they don't take up a lot of space, so you can just – I don't know how you pack, but I throw a lot of my shit in just in like a big-ass garbage bag. And That's like boxes you pack? are – No, you, yeah. you got a nice carry-on uh... – Oh, no, no, not if I'm like tra- – like I'm, that would be a gangster-ass way to travel is if you just threw a shit in a garbage bag. bag. <laughs> <Garbage> <laughs> that really bag. would be gangster as fuck. But um, no, if I'm like moving, like I moved from my apartment to my house and all I did was just throw mad shit into garbage bags and bring it like – you know, in the U-Haul storage thing. I'm not, like, packing to move. But um, boxers, socks, and, like, like the wife beater shirts are just so, like, compactable that you could just throw them on the bottom of a bag and they just, like, conform so well that you could just stack mad shit on top of it, you know? So there's no reason to ever get rid of them unless they're fully ripped or something like that. Yeah. But other, I, I'm curious what everybody else will say because I think people will legitimately be like – some people will be like, I never keep them for more than three years. That's even a long time too. I mean like – Dude, I just said I had them since middle school. How old – when was I in middle school? Think about it. I was born 1988. So 98, I'm 10. 99, 2000, I'm, I'm 12. 
So in in what year are you in middle school? You start, I don't know, remember how old, but when you're 12, you're in middle school, right? Yeah, I think so. So from the year 2000, dog, that's 19 years. Yeah, that's the same with the those Jackie's bat mitzvah pants joints. That's right. They have They have been that long. Like, do you think if I can go back to that bat mitzvah and she hands me those shits and I say to her like, oh, thank you so much. I'm going to keep these for 20 years. She'd be like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like, picture anything. Like, if somebody gives you now and you're like, oh, thanks so much, man. I'm going to hold on to this for 20 years. They'd be like, what? Like, that's just weird. What do you What do you have now? Like, is there anything that's been gifted to you that, like, you can envision yourself using in 20 years? No, there's nothing. Like, I'm even looking at, like, this microphone. In 20 years, I'm not going to know where the fuck this is. That's true. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's nothing. Like the boxers, the shit that's closest to you, literally, like all up on your fucking nutsack and your ass. The thing that's like probably needs to be recycled the most. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. That's why I want to talk about this because people are going to call some dirty motherfuckers because there are going to be people who are like, I throw my shit out like every year. I throw it out every three years. Yes, we probably should. I mean, like there's got to be bacteria that even you do a wash that like some shit rubs off on your balls onto your boxers that stays there. (laughs) You know, there's got to be some like some type of like bacteria that grows on boxers. No, it's funny because I'm 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 a semi germaphobe except when it comes to all my own stuff, and I don't care. Same. Which makes no sense. I shouldn't be like that. I should just. I know. I'm big on like so. Molly's cousins were here, and we were at the bar on Friday night, and um, one of her cousins was wearing like an outfit in the bar, sitting on like bar stools. And then she sat on my bed and right away I was like, yo, what the fuck? Like you were just out, like on a bar stool that like some fat dude ass crack was probably on. And now like you're close to my pillow with your clothes and shit. But like I would come back if I was in some sweats or jeans and like exactly. if I was tired, I would just pass the fuck Even out. Even if you just played ball, you would Even like if I just get ball. home and lay down on your bed and you're sweaty and you're just like, what? Yeah, which is I mean, it's 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 like the old saying, like my germs, you know, like I don't like I'm fine with my shit, but I don't want you with your shit on my shit. Yeah, exactly. Totally. If you really think about it, like other people's stuff is like that does gross you the fuck out. Like if you if you smell a fart and it's somebody else's like some somebody's fart in like public that was just inside somebody's ass, bro. Yeah. Like that was just in their ass. And then I remember I saw, I forgot where I saw it or I read it, but like that's actually your sense of smell and your sense of taste are so connected Yeah, that like you're actually kind of tasting a little bit. Oh. It, yeah. It's like you got some fucking gross like shit particles on the back of your tongue from some oh. fat dude who ate too much oh. Wendy's and you're just like, uh. I once uh, borrowed a pair of boxers from Phil Berman because I think I slept over his house and like, fuck? I don't know what happened to the Why boxers. Why didn't you just go commando, wearing. dog? I don't know. I don't know what the reason was. There was a reason why he was like, here, here's a pair of boxers. You just finished sucking them off and he was like, here, have my boxers. And you were well, like, like okay. my balls itched for like a good, like, I think six years after that. And I always reverted it back to like, oh. Yeah, six years ago, Phil Berman gave me a pair of boxers, and ever since then, my balls have been itching. Imagine he had crabs, bro. I don't. I think the. I, I don't know if he set me up or like his boxers were on some weary shit, or there was some, like he gave me a pair of boxers that still to this day when I itch my balls, I'm like, I think that was from the pair of boxers that Phil Berman gave me. Yo, think about he might have had crabs. <laughs> think about how gross crabs are. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up right now because. I remember Joey Diaz telling a story on his podcast. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't want to see that picture. They're literally like little bugs. My dad once stayed in like a hotel. It was like, I mean, he'll stay in wherever. But we used to stay in like weird Akanu lodges and like all these weird fucking hotels that back in the day, there was probably crazy bed bugs in the shit. And one time he stayed in a motel and his whole side was like red and eaten up. He definitely got bed bugged like the fuck up. Oh shit, man. Yeah, he slept on like cuz my dad sleeps on his side and he he woke up and like I I don't know what it was if he met me somewhere but he he was staying at the motel 
but his shit definitely had bed bugs in it, and he like it bit him up on his whole side. Was see like, that fucking ruins it for me because I actually like hotels. Like I like the idea of going somewhere and being in a hotel. Like this is your little fucking fort. You know yeah. what I mean? Like this is yeah. the home base right here. But it's like, yeah, somebody else was just sleeping in that fucking bed, and you don't know if they were changing the sheets or not changing the sheets or whatever the fuck was going on. Oh shit, you broke up. No, we back. And you're back. Okay. I knew it was going to come back because it did that shit earlier. I was like, all right, I'm going to just wait two seconds and then it pops back in. It, yeah, there's no lagging, but then every now and then it'll just hit us with like a three second pause. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. It's just like a, like a, um, what's that? Uh, like a curse button at the Oscars or some shit like that. It's just catching up for when we were talking about balls and all that oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They lag it like 30 <laughs> seconds. <and> then... <laughs> no, but what were you saying about hotel? Like, I like hotel rooms too, but come to think of it, it's just like there was another couple exactly. or there was sleeping just, in that shit. Yup, just another person living in the room that now is your room, and it's like, that's weird. <laughs> it is very weird. But and the, the sheets, yes, they can clean, but those the comforters, they're not cleaning those shits. I always take the comforter straight off. Oh, you just blew my mind right now. Do they really? Oh, you're right. They had they don't. You can't clean the comforters because that's a big. That's like a big project to put that in the washing machine. Yeah, you could wash the sheets and have interchangeable sheets, but they don't have extra comforters on their fucking rolly carts. I'm getting from now. You just changed my mind, dog. I'm never using a comforter again in a hotel. You can't use the comforter, and then if you stay in like some hood shits, like I stay in sometimes, like some weird fucking, like dick in a box lodge or some shit like some weird shit <laughs> you know those like lodge. that like mustard yeah. colored yellow cotton the ones shit where you're pretty sure they're selling crack out of the back and there's a hooker yes. like two rooms over but you know the type of blanket i'm talking about right that like that brownish looking shit oh so they've got that brownish looking shit and then on top of that they got like a greenish flowery oh. like like f- like greenish blue flowery and that shit has been there comfort. since like 1984 with like weird cocaine like debris and like oh. hookers like ash cheeks that have just been like in between <laughs> bodily fluids bolts. that don't even exist anymore <laughs> yeah for real are on those like oh. if you stay at like a like a days in or some fucking shit like that or even worse than that some no name like like i don't know the fucking sun lodge in or some shit like that they're going to have that weird fucking brown ass comforter shit. They're going to have that greenish bluish flowery like comf- like uh like different material type shit on top of it. Take both of those shits right the fuck off and yeah. just sleep with like the white sheets cuz those are your probably your best bet. Without even trying, you you convinced me on that. The second you said they're probably not washing the comforters, I was like, "Oh, how did I not think of that before?" Hell. And even at nice ass hotels too, like a lot of people think because you're paying more money and because it's like super expensive that they're doing more shit. Fuck that. It's the same staff working at those shits. They're not doing more. It's just you're paying more. That's a good point. You know? So it's like people think they go to these fine ass, like fine dining restaurants and it's like, oh, I'm paying $600 a meal. Like everything is spotless in the kitchen and the chef is fucking probably using tongs and cleaning and doing all this fucking shit you go back there that motherfucker's picking his nose just like a chef in the fucking local diner he's putting his hand on his nuts and touching your cheeseburger the glasses always creep me out because glasses they never you can never really wash them too thoroughly because of how they're shaped you know what i'm saying like the way glasses are shaped yeah that with for them to wash them like they're not well most of the time your hand is too big to get your hand in there and really scrub all yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. So like I don't I think that they're not washed really well. So I always get kind of creeped out by glasses in restaurants. Like I'd rather just have like if I like give me a can of Coke, like just give me the can and I'm be- better than fucking getting a glass that Well, the cans are dirty as fuck too. They always yeah, say you, you should just, clean the top. Yeah, if you clean yeah, the yeah, top yeah. thing, you're good. Yeah. Sometimes I I I've, I've done that. Most of the time I have it. I'm going to start doing it again. I'm becoming more of a germaphobe should. through this conversation as we talk. Well, no, the cans are the worst because they say that those should sit in the factory and like there's like rat piss on it and like just weird like. <laughs> Imagine like, you walk into the factory and there are like a line of rats just pissing on. I'm telling cans. you, man, it's a huge <laughs> warehouse that all this shit usually comes from. So what do you think these thing, these b- soda cans are just laying on the ground and like bugs are crawling on them and shit like that and the floor's dirty and it's dusty and then they shipped uh, and then it gets packed into a truck. 
and the truck is fucking dirty as fuck and you're driving through like the desert and there's sand and shit coming into the like truck hitting your can there's a guy with dysentery shitting on all the cans and... yeah there's a guy comes through and he just pees on top of all the cans to like sanitize the shit <laughs> then they take garlic for no reason and start spreading it all over the cans and it's really <laughs> weird then they put it through rick's ass cheeks before it leaves the factory then they just take battery acid and start pouring it all over the cans and really it's weird nobody even knows why they do that one Oh, and Verona comes by and fucking ashes her cigarette butts on top of him. And that's how Coca-Cola is made, kids. And then they take polar bears and jerk them off on top of the cans. And <laughs> everybody's like, hey, is this polar bear semen on my can? And they're like, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Um, what? The, oh, I for silverware in restaurants, I don't put my mouth on the whole shit. And Molly could tell you this. Like, if I'm eating... I like if I go to even like your house or some shit like that and you give me like a fork from your crib, I'll like put it in the meat pause and I'll like <laughs> I'll just like bite the thing off of the like I don't put full mo- forks and spoons in my mouth. That's actually sort of genius that you don't do that. Like I, that's like like I know how my dishwasher works and it's sort of like sometimes shit will come out and I'm like, oh, it didn't get the whole shit. Oh, uh-huh. I mean, like, it's not perfect. Like, a yeah, it's a good point. Like, like, it's not perfect. I always felt like, there, like that too. Like, some crusty shit on it. Whenever I wash something, I always feel like it's this is not really perfect. This is not like there's still some sort of remnants on there of Hell something, yeah. and that makes me feel like I don't want to eat off this again. Do you use the dishwasher? Or you've used the dishwasher before, right? No, I hand wash. No, but like you had a dishwasher at your mom's crib, right? Yeah, but I never did it. My mom did it back when I lived with her. But. But I think there's two different types of dishwasher people, and and me and Molly are different like this. I have to at least rinse whatever the hell is off the plate, and I'll like I'll, I'll oh yeah yeah I'm, I'm a rinser first. I think yeah. It's, it's there's some people that to just, just like put it in. That's what I'm saying. Some people will just put the whole shit in there with like whatever the with whatever they ate, like a glob of ketchup or like some excess like steak juice and shit. Like I gotta rinse all that shit off. Like the plate's gotta look like it got washed you gotta do, do a little time. pre-wash before you yeah you definitely got, you right gotta do, yeah you gotta do a little pre-wash 100 percent. i know yeah uh, molly will just put shit in there or i'll take a fork out and i'll be like i'll know this shit is dirty because i see some remnants on it whereas if i were to just be doing the dishwasher all the time and if she were to li- she's gonna listen to this and she'd probably say to herself that i never do the dishwasher so i have no she's right definitely in- right molly we know you're right <laughs> we, got, we know you I've, know we know he never washes that shit everybody knows I've, that don't worry and all the I've, people who watch this video literally the tens of thousands of people who are gonna watch this they know that <laughs> She's trying to call me out. We just did a Molly's Mind before this shit. Shout out to Corn's World. No one's going to fucking subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Fuck all you fucking people, all right? All you motherfuckers. <laughs> Fuck you guys for not going fucking subscribing to that shit. I'm calling everybody out right now. <laughs> Fuck everybody. <laughs> uh, what were you going to say? You probably forgot because uh, you were too busy cursing at everybody. No, she um she called me out for being self-centered because we were talking about uh travel. And she sort of got at me, and and she had a good point, I think. <laughs> I think that was the end of my story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but she knew the deal she was signing up for, though. Yeah, exactly. Like, like that's, the, like, everybody, you're you. I know you, you know. I know me, yeah. too. I know I, I'm, I'd be a handle to deal with. <laughs> so it's like, she she had to know that that was the terms of service. I know, but like, but I not feel for like, nothing. You, you actually are pretty good, though, in that you might be selfish. But if I was making a spectrum of like dudes, and like most dudes would fall on the spectrum, I think more selfish than you. I'm not saying you're not selfish, but I'm saying that relatively speaking, it's like it's like when my sister mm-hmm. gets at um, her husband, my brother-in-law. My mm-hmm. immediate thought is always like. This dude is way better than like all the other dudes I know. See, it's hard. It's hard for me to agree with you. Like, so I think if your sister were to ask you to do some shit, you'd be like, oh, "Come on, come 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 on." I'm not. No, no, I don't like. Pretty no. much. That would pretty much be my reaction. <laughs> but I feel like if I asked you to do the same exact shit, you'd almost be like, 
you'd, you'd hit me with some like, nah, 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 nah. But you'd give me more of a benefit of the doubt. And I feel like I'm the same way with <laughs> my friends than I am with like Molly or my family or some shit, which so, is fucked up to her. You got to give me an example, though, because I'm not sure. Like, I hear the dynamic you're saying, and it's possible that it's true, but it's also possible that I'd still be like, nah. I'm trying to think of some shit, man. But th- you're saying that's what you think you do with her? Like, you like you'll hit her with some no thing but yeah like if she were to be like like can you can you instead of doing the laundry at the house can you do that shit at the laundromat and then fold it all and then bring it all home i'd be like come on come on come on come on come on like mm, you gotta like, kind of hit her with no. a come on on that that's a yeah, big ass no, I'm, I'm trying to find like an example of some shit like th- that's a little extreme but now i'm gonna say if you were to hit me with some shit like hey man can you do me a favor like I- i'm away for a couple days can you do my laundry at the at the local laundromat? And I would never ask you to do that. <laughs> I know, I know, but I'm saying. I think that that, but I think that that's why like, that yeah, dynamic you're it. talking about might exist is because you know I would never ask you to do something even close to that. So if there is a situation where I ask you to do something, you immediately would think like, "Damn, he never asked me to do anything." So I, yeah, okay, because I'm on to look out for you. You're my boy, and you never asked me to do shit. Whereas with your wife. She's your wife, and you're so always around your wife, and so time. exactly. Yeah. So you feel like you feel like you just asked me to do three things yesterday I didn't really want to do, and now you're asking me again this thing. So yeah, I'm gonna be like, what the fuck? I'm yeah, telling you, I'm, I I'm telling you when it comes to my sister and yeah. my brother-in-law, there are times where my sister would say something, and I'll be like, you don't know how good you have it. That's how what I think. So I'm like, he's a good dude. My brother-in-law is a good ass dude. And, I, yeah. and I'm comparing him to me, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't. He's just a. Be, he's just better. He's better at this. He's better at this interpersonal stuff. He's better at like taking care of his 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 duties like that. You know what I mean? Like his responsibilities. Yeah. So, and I think you're pretty good at taking care of your responsibilities. But yeah, the other thing is, and Molly already knows this. It's not that you're not gonna do this shit. It's that you're gonna do it and be like, semi fuck this. Yeah, but, but and like I'm gonna that, do it on my time too. And but she's also got to just accept. As long as you're doing it, you just got to accept the fuck this attitude because you're not. She's not gonna get you to be happy about doing some shit that you don't want to do. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there's, yeah. you're not gonna be doing jumping jacks with a smile on your face. Like yes, I can't wait to fucking go to the laundromat. So you're just gonna have to roll with the punches for you to react like that because that's how you're gonna react no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good ass point. And also, what she doesn't understand is that there's probably like eighty percent of the shit that you do in life. Your like your immediate reaction is like sort of fuck this. <laughs> yes, and like, <laughs> but I also have in 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 the back of my mind whether she thinks it or not, like her best interest and like my daughter's best interest and all this shit, you know. So it's like it might be like fuck this shit, but it's like uh, like. I'm saying fuck this shit because it's it's gonna benefit you. I what? don't even know that. I don't know, I don't know what that means at all. You were reaching <laughs> on that one, dog. <laughs> Basically, like I don't want to do any of the shit you ask me, so stop asking me to do shit. Well, that's and about- whether that makes me come off as and looking stubborn, then then that's just who I am. Well, that I was gonna say that's you got the contrarian thing in you too. I have that in me for sure. Where my initial reaction, sometimes I have to check myself. Because, mm-hmm. yes, my initial reaction will be like, fuck that. But then, like, sometimes when I stop and think about it, I'll be like, wait, no, I actually want to do that. Why am I saying fuck that to that shit? Yes, I know tons of people like that. And I'm not going to say names, but someone very close to me, family member, that, like, their answer is always no first. But then it's like they got to warm up to whatever you just asked them. And they'd be like, oh, that actually is pretty practical or that makes sense. Like, all right, yeah, you could do it. That's why my mom's a genius because she knows how to deal with me. She knows exactly what to say to get me to do something. Yeah. Like she just has to present it as if it's not a debatable thing mm -hmm. and also present it in a tone of voice where I'm not immediately going to be skeptical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if she just, if she just said, talks like cheery, like my mom is. Like, really cheery, and then she tells me, like, oh, you got to do this, this, and this. Then I'm like, all right, I got to do that, that, and that. But, yeah. like, somebody could say the same shit, but just say it in, a in like, a question format. Like, yeah. oh, do you mind doing da-da-da-da-da? 
then I'll be like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I've seen that with you. And I, I know that cause you're my, like my boy, one of my best friends. But like when we were at Politicon and like a dude was just like, he approached you in some type of way that like he told you he had like all these Facebook views or some shit and you should come on the show and you're just like, yeah, yeah okay, man. Like it was like, he hits you with it in a totally wrong way. Whereas if he maybe said it in the right format, you would have been more open to it or nah, whatever. That's probably asking. never going on. Anybody, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, no offense to anybody, but like, but there is definitely a certain type of way that with anybody, you got a phrase, like you got to speak their language, you know? And if you come at someone, some type of way that, that automatically why, gonna put their, like their blockers, but up. that's why it's hard. Cause with some people, the authoritative way is the way that works with other people. The art of persuasion is the way that it works. And yes. you don't know who you're dealing with until you try something. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's that's a, what um it's difficult. That's what um I listened to. I haven't listened to Rogan in a while, but I I was I listened to uh, Pac Man shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty. I mean, it was pretty good. It, it was sort of cool that like like we went to dinner with him when we were out in L.A. So it was like cool listening to him. I mean, you know him personally, and like so. But like uh, he said that point of like. What was it a stepfather or something like that? Where like they're they're stubborn in their ways, where their answer is always going to be no, whether even if it's like they've got a rational idea or some shit from the kid. You remember that point? He was just like, it's the. I don't like, remember David saying that. He was talking about uh, his stepdad. Does he have no, a stepdad? Not, no, not his stepdad. I think someone else made a point that like, even if you have like a like a like a reasonable idea, like you there's some type of fathers out there that are always just going to say no to it because you haven't like worked for it or some shit. I don't fucking know. You're saying know. this was when we were at dinner or him on Rogan saying <laughs> no on Rogan. Oh, okay. So far off track. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember that, <laughs> but I do remember that he was on Rogan and good oh. for him. That was, oh. a, that was a long time coming. I was trying to, I was trying to hook him up for a while. Uh huh. I mean, I thought it was okay. I mean, like yeah, it, was it good. seemed like stale at some points, like, at, I don't know. At the end, they didn't really have much more to talk about or whatnot, and Rogan was just like, "All right, peace out." <laughs> yeah, it's uh, but, uh, it's good how when he has on lefty people, they always talk about like substantive things, though. Yeah, no, that is good. I I'm curious. I feel like so Kanye did David Letterman shit. I feel like what Kanye was trying to do, and since he's, I guess, off the crazy wagon now and try to become more likable and rational and you know people wants people to understand him a little bit better and see him as a normal guy now he well i feel like his mindset was like who has the most popular like um outreach now whether it's a podcast or like some show and i think he saw that as rogan and that's why he was big on trying to get on rogan's show and rogan kept saying it was going to happen and this and that and now david letterman had that my next guest is shit, which is, I don't know if that's a bigger audience than Rogan, but it's on Netflix and it's produced well and he could sort of, uh, format it. So the way he wanted it to be. So I don't know if you watched it, but like they went to like his Sunday church shit and they did music and they showed his clothing line and it was sort of, so they did some fucking pro Kanye propaganda shit. Exactly. Whereas like Rogan shit probably would've it would have been, been real. You had to have a fucking three hour conversation. Exactly. So, but I don't know if he also just wanted to go to like a, I mean, Letterman, in my eyes, is a bigger name than Rogan, you know? Yeah, oh, he's definitely a bigger name than Rogan. Like, Rogan would admit that. Yeah, so I don't know if that's the reasoning why Kanye, because someone asked me, that kid Mike, I did a chat with him, and he was like, um, wasn't Kanye supposed to go on Rogan? Like, what happened with that shit? And I feel like that's where the disconnect could have happened. It was Kanye trying to find a bigger, like, the biggest yeah, show Kanye's out there. Yeah, Kanye's a fucking fame chaser, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, he's already giant. He's already an A-list celebrity, and he's still, like, kind of making, like, political decisions and shit. But he might still mm -hmm. go on Rogan at some point. But I would have been interested in that conversation to see how Rogan deals with Kanye. Because Rogan yeah. is, will flow with whoever. But yeah. If you got somebody, would like... Would press him on the shit? Would you know Kanye's gonna, like contradict himself like eight times and you know kanye is gonna say like 13 crazy things in the course of a three-hour podcast yeah so like what are you gonna do are you gonna push probably not he's probably not gonna push back so it's like i'd be i'd be interested just to see it for that reason well it was it was interesting in the letterman thing because he really didn't um he, like letterman obviously is just gonna cater to kanye and you know we love you like just be pro kanye but there was one point where i think kanye brought up trump first 
And then Letterman was just like, um, did you vote for Kanye? Oh, uh, for Kanye, for Trump. And Kanye was like, uh, I had never voted in my life. And then Letterman was just like, well, then you don't have a say in this. And Kanye, you could see sort of like shut down. Yeah, but that's not like, even a good point from Letterman. I don't even like that point. No? No. It's just, it's too cheap. It's too hacky. It's like, no, he's allowed to have a political opinion. Just because he didn't vote doesn't mean he can't have thoughts about politics. Yeah, that's a good point, too. But I mean, but he's but like, that, that's he's why influencing would... so many people with those, like, thoughts. Oh, and... I mean, don't get me wrong. He's saying stupid shit. Mm-hmm. But it's not stupid because he didn't vote. It's stupid because it's stupid. You know what I mean? Like, that's mm-hmm. a non sequitur point from David yeah. Letterman. That's a good, yeah. But, like, Joe, I see that. with Joe Rogan, at least he would have had a format where he would have had to, like, go and it would have been a more open format. You know what I mean? Whereas yeah. It was, it's more structured with David Letterman. And I saw, yeah. I covered a little part of it because it got me pissed off. Because Kanye was saying he was bullied for wearing the Trump hat. And it's yeah. Like, okay, maybe a handful of people went a little too far in their criticisms of you. But let's be serious, dog. Most of it was people saying, hey, th- that's fucking stupid, and here's why I think that's stupid. And it's yeah, like, people had reasoning for it. That's not bullying. That's not bullying. People throw that word around too much now. Like, that's not bullying. Yeah. Like, grow the fuck up, man. You're an A-list celebrity, you got a zillion dollars, and you wore a hat of a, of a president who's bombing a zillion countries, and he's bigoted as fuck, and everybody knows it. Like, you're gonna get some blowback for that. And Kanye tries to do this dumb shit where he's like, like, nah, it means what I want it to mean. Like, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean what you want it to mean. That's why everybody got mad at him when he tried to wear the Confederate flag. Because it's like, no, you're not big enough where you get to override the objective meaning of shit. You're oh. not big enough where if you wear a fucking Klan hood, that all of a sudden you get to pretend like the Klan is not a murderous terrorist organization, white supremacist yeah. organization. Like, that's the thing is people try to tell Kanye, like, Gravity is a thing that exists, and he's like, well, what if I don't want it to exist? It's like, I don't yeah. give a fuck if you don't want it to exist. Now shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, yeah. like we're, It's like we're dealing with a petulant child, and then when we call him a petulant child, he's like, how could you? I'm a genius. Yeah. It's like, no, if you were a genius, you'd be saying genius shit. You're not saying genius shit. You're saying the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's weird, because if I see someone wearing a, a MAGA hat, my first reaction is like, fuck that person. And I think that was the point he was trying to make is just like, just because I put the hat on, everybody was like, fuck, fuck that person. And like people yell like, fuck you. But I still, if I see someone in a MAGA hat, I'm like, fuck that person. Like, I mean, there's just something that. It means that, what it means. It means you're saying I support Donald Trump. That's yeah. what it means. So if that means you literally support the things he's doing, well then, okay, bitch, here are the things he's doing. You yeah. support that? So, you know, it's like, it's like you wouldn't catch me dead in an Obama hat. Why? Because mm-hmm. you get the good and the bad with that hat. You get the baggage. Like, you wouldn't catch me wearing a Hope shirt, Hope and Change shirt or whatever. Why? Because then I'm saying, I'm defending this, good and the bad. So yeah. a lot of the bad things he did, he did drone strikes on innocent civilians and killed them. And I think that was fucking terrible. He mm-hmm. didn't prosecute George W. Bush. So, like... I, what I'm saying to the world is I'm st- I'm still on a team, even though this person did a lot of fucked up shit. And it's yeah. like, n- no, that don't you can't rep that and then get mad when people try to talk to you about why it makes no sense to support that. Like, well, it's just a crazy point, because, I mean, I'll wear even on like so. So say Under Armour was like beating kids in their factories or some shit like that. And you're wearing the shirt. Then they'll be like, Kyle, like, do you support them beating the kids or some shit like that? And you're just like, no, I'm just wearing this shirt because I like this Under Armour shirt, you know? But first of all, just so we're clear, guys, I don't think Under Armour is doing that. So <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no, obviously not. Under Armour is a great company. Yeah, but, but I mean, like with the, the whole Nike shit, like people threw away Nikes because they 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 were supporting Colin Kaepernick or whatnot. But okay, so here's the problem with that. I you. I don't, what companies are not, like, every company is doing, is some, doing some fucked up shit. So, like, I agree with the idea of trying to be as, like, pure as possible with your decisions in terms of purchases. But mm-hmm. if every company is doing some fucked up shit, and, and, and there are degrees, like, some companies have sweatshops and that's fucking terrible. And then there are other uh, other companies that maybe dodge taxes, which is really terrible, but not as bad as sweatshops. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah. 
there are degrees of it, but every company's doing some fucked up shit. So like we need to try to change the actual system while still understanding that, hey, I got to wear a shirt. You know what I mean? Or I got to get gas in my car, even though I don't support like these big uh, like gasoline companies that are putting yes. oil to the water or something. Exactly. Shit. So I, I do think that that's a little bit of a different issue, although there is kind of a similar point to be made. But when it comes to politics, I mean, that's the clearest example of like, I am repping this because I like this politician, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. Like, I don't mind wearing a wearing a a Bernie shirt or a Bernie hat because I actually agree with over 95% of his record. You know what I mean? Yeah. So with Obama, what? I I agree with 50%, 60% of what he did, like at best. With so you Trump, can wear like a O-B-A-M hat or some yeah. shit like that. O-B, O-B and half an A. <laughs> no, just O-B yeah, and then like a quarter of an A or something like that. That would actually be pretty dope. They'd be like, yo, what company is that? And you'd be like, oh, it's the 60% of Obama that I like. <laughs> and people be like, you're a fucking crazy person. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. I, got... still, I still have bed bugs in front of me. Not bed bugs, crabs in front of me. The picture That's of crabs. That's disgusting. I, wouldn't even, I couldn't even look at Kevin Durant yesterday. They zoomed in on his Achilles popping. <gasps> his Achilles? Yeah, the I... shit pop, dog. I knew he got re-injured. I didn't know it was that bad. Yeah, they zoom in on it, and literally you see his calf go, pop? Like, there's two sides of it, and it just, the both of them go like, there's so like he, an explosion. So he's done. Crap. It's a wrap. So he's done. He, he's done for next year, too. Like, he, well, and he's going to get signed to the Knicks and be out for a year. So I hope they don't he's, sign he's him He's out for now. a hot minute. No, I mean, they're going to sign him. That's like, I said, this is the most Knicksy thing to happen to a non-Nick. Because now they're going to sign him. If they sign him, him I'm going to be pissed now. Because yeah, they've done they this will. so many it's, times. Because it's not, yeah. he's, he ain't no spring chicken, dog. I mean, if he was no. not injured, that'd be fine. But if he's injured, now I don't want him. I mean, he'll he'll still come back and be fine. But it's just, that's why it's That's what they said every move. time. We got some old dude who had fucking injuries. I know. It's going to be Amari Stoudemire 2.0. We'll get one good season out of him, and then he'll turn into fucking oh. Sasha Fuyacic. Oh. Yeah, it's not going to be good, but th- that's why it's a uh, Knicks injury. I mean, like it happening is the is the is the ultimate Knicks move because now they sign him to a max contract with all these no trade clauses and guaranteed money, where we get stuck with him in six years when he can't fucking walk anymore. I'm miserable now. Imagine someone gave you a six year contract right now that was like all guaranteed. They were like, "We'll give you all this money for six years," like. You're fifth and sixth years. If you got all that money already coming to you, you're just gonna be like, "Fuck this shit." Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not fucking like gonna research my articles as hard as I did in my first year. Well, that's why I you got, got you got to get the people who are like the real deal because there are a lot of people who are not self motivated, and that's a problem. If you got if you got a player who's self motivated, like LeBron, I I think LeBron is self motivated. Like he wants to be the best. He's not motivated he's by the money. Out. You think he's checked out? I don't know about that. We'll tell. I think L.A. now with like movies and shit like that. I think he's starting to flip his script where he's sort of checking into like Hollywood. Well, we'll be able to see, we'll be able to tell this season. Like this season will be the arbiter of that. I think. But, yeah. But my sense from him was always he had that Michael Jordan gene. No fuck no. No. Fuck no. LeBron? Hell no. Because that's the so. sense I got. That's the Michael Jordan gene. That's the Tiger Woods gene. That's the no, no, no. I'm doing this because I want to be the best. I don't care. I'm not. I'm not in it for the money. I'm not I in it for second place. I'm not in it for top tens. I don't think so. I think he's in it. I think he's in it for the like he wants to be known by everybody else as the greatest, but doesn't actually care to be the greatest i think i mean from what i've seen sense can you want to be can you want to be seen as the greatest without being the great like you can want to be seen as the greatest without wanting to do the work to be the greatest but i think he wants to do the work i think he's also just got fucking crazy ability that he sort of is the Mm, i don't know man i kind of it's hard the natural talent argument is a rough one because i feel like it's overused it's a crutch when, when you don't. If you don't like somebody, but you mm-hmm. want to pawn off how good they are, it's easy to just be like, it's all just natural ability. But no, he spends fucking hours in the gym, and he's got a diet that's crazy. And true, he works the only thing hard about, as a motherfucker. 
the only thing about Durant that I sort of respect is just like the fact that he played last night almost makes me think he he loves basketball that much that like he was willing to risk the shit that almost is just like well, he wants another ring he came this far he was trying to help his team yeah. get another ring man that's what I'm saying like he sacrificed his shit so now like I, I that's how I see him as a basketball player it's just like if the Knicks sign him he cares that much about basketball where I mean, he wouldn't do that shit for the Knicks. He did it for the Warriors because they had an opportunity yet to win an NBA championship. Well, that's what I'm saying. If 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 <laughs> if, the, if he took the Knicks that far, then he would try to do it. But if it if they weren't going to even yeah, if they were the just playoffs, playing like Utah yeah. on a Thursday, yeah, he ain't doing that. That motherfucker shit. is like sitting so at home. Was it the same potato. injury that he had that he was sitting out for? That now, yes. Oh yeah. man, came back way too early. Um, and I, I mean, I, like, so here's the thing. NBA players come back from injuries, and the first thing a coach or a team will do is put them on a minutes restriction. You, you can only play 12 minutes a game. And they it's didn't your first get, team do back. that to him. They said, you tell us when you're tired, and he tried to fight this through. This guy it. came back from an injury early, and he played. And there was no minutes restriction. It was just go. He was playing like he, he hadn't even been out for a month. So, like— it just it was mind boggling to me. He had him practice. He practices one time, and then you put him out there without a fucking minutes restriction. He was probably gassed out too. He was probably yeah. struggling cardio wise. And it's like his his adrenaline was running, and he was feeling good, and he was like, "Let me try and make a move right now." Pop, oh. and the shit was a wrap. It's only a matter of time, man. Is it like, true that they cheered when he got hurt? Yeah, some fans were. Yeah, they were cheering a little bit. Canada's better they, than that. Come on, Canada. That's what I'm saying. They're getting a bad rap because, I, like, I mean, me personally, my first reaction would be like, oh, fuck. You know, and I would have been, like, upset. I mean, like, it's an advantage to your team, but you never want to see – like, an injury is not something you want to wish upon someone else ever, you never, know? Never, never. So, like, the fact that their natural reaction was to clap is almost – is fucked up. And I don't think the whole crowd was doing that shit. Well, apparently but, Serge Ibaka was, like – chastising the crowd right yeah yeah abaca lowry like a lot of people were like come Prop, on props come on. to them props yeah. to them um but yeah it's um because they probably also know too i mean they probably did it for the right reasons and they were like just don't do that guys but they yeah. probably know too that like now it's a it'll easier be, path for them it'll be a little tainted like people will go oh okay so yeah you beat the golden state warriors but they didn't really have durant yeah yeah, I mean, I think to those guys, I don't even think they give a fuck about that. You know, like someone who wins the Masters or some shit, if Tiger doesn't make the cut or is out of it, isn't going to be like, yeah, but Tiger was out. Well, golf is a little different because it's an individual sport. And like, yeah, even the best player ever, Tiger Woods, only won 25%, 26% of his tournaments. Yeah, true. But for this... I don't know. I feel like I feel like that is a point people will make. Like, oh, okay, so you beat the Warriors, but they just didn't have Durant. So that's yeah, not definitely. the same. Yeah, especially the way he played in the first quarter last night. He was fucking beasting. He was like three for three from three. Well, that's what I'm saying. Does does Golden State have a chance in hell now without Durant? Yeah, th- I think they're going to win in Golden State. I don't know if they're going to win Game Seven in Toronto, but that shit's going Game Seven, which is gonna is going to be dope. Damn, you you think that? So you think that in Golden State they're They'll win in Golden State on Thursday, the next game. And the series, right. series will be tied. But then they go back to Toronto for game seven. And I think the referees and, like, it just the Warriors, uh, the Raptors will be too much. So, um, Curry and Clay, have they been spotty so far? I mean, last night they were they were ridiculous. They were ridiculous last night. But they say, it like, just, the, when you have a team that's built around just jacking up threes that you could easily be hit or miss all the time, you know? Oh, but, but like, the, the – the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, the the threes they make with, like, you know, a minute left in the game with the crowd going crazy. Like, imagine shooting in front of, whatever, 25,000 people – with a minute left, down by three, and just having to make a three with like two guys in your face, and you just cash it. Yeah, some people step up in those situations, man. But like, but like the level of the like the degree of like how hard that is, is just like normalized by like an announcer just being like, he got it, you know, like. But like, put yourself in that shoe. Anybody else 
is just like straight throwing that ball out of bounds. Like it's just like the ugliest yeah. shot ever. A lot of people choke, but some people have that, you know, that Michael Jordan gene where they step up in situations like that. Like they will play better yeah. under pressure. Better. Well, like, it's like it's like Brooks Kepka in golf. He doesn't win regular tournaments. He mm-hmm. only wins major championships. That's what I'm saying. But like but like we could speak about that stuff, but like we could make a game winning shot at Roosevelt you know, a Nourishell or something like that. And it's just like, it feels so good. Yeah, it feels mad good. But like, imagine making a, like a diesel ass putt to win the masters, like, oh. and having mad people staring at you. Oh. And like the, the, the degree of difficulty or whatever is just so, it's just like, you can't even put it into words. And the fact that people try to put it into words and make it normal and just be like, Oh shit. No, so it's he not normal. People don't know how hard it is. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Oh yeah. shit. He hit the game winning shot. Like he made that putt. That's yeah. crazy. But it's like, no, no, it's crazier than whatever you're thinking right now. Yeah, because yeah, that's that. See, that's why people always say, in order to understand a sport, you have to have played it, because yeah. you don't know, you don't get it if you're just watching it, but you haven't played it, you can't relate to it. Like, but even then, you like you played golf. Can you can you really feel what it would feel like to try and sink some diesel ass putt on eighteen I at the Masters? I couldn't imagine what it's forget the Masters. I couldn't imagine what it's like to win any PGA tournament. Yeah, it's it just seems impossible, and I'm not a bad golfer. I'm for your average Joe. I'm I'm a good golfer, but yeah, compared to those guys, I'm fucking straight trash. So that's why, like, when you watch the Masters and these people have these epic collapses, you're like, how how is he folding that? No, bag it's like that's right the now. default. That's what should happen. Like that's, that's what happens with everybody. Like that's that. normal. Like that's yeah. the normal thing. What you just yeah. saw happen that happened to Rory McIlroy in 2011, I think it was. Spieth too, didn't he shit the bed multiple Spieth, times? Spieth shit the bed in um, what was it, twenty fifteen at the Masters, twenty sixteen at the Masters when Danny Willett won. I forget what year it was, but it happened to Rory in twenty eleven. See, that's the thing. Like, and this this is why Tiger is the greatest of all time. Is that everybody always had scar tissue? Tiger never did. He he always just crushed everybody. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Jack Nicholas had scar tissue. Greg Norman had scar tissue. You go down the list. I just said Rory McIlroy, amazing. Dustin Johnson has nothing but scar tissue. Like, mm-hmm. all these guys, because that's what happens. That's the learning curve. You have to, like, lose before you win type thing, you know? Yep, like, that's yep. the way it works. But then along comes this dude crushing fields by 15 shots, by 12 shots. And everybody's like, yo, this isn't possible. Like, that's not possible what you're doing here. Yeah. And you know? and I respect Tiger in the sense where it's like if he's off, he won't even make the cut. So it's not like he's going to get a lead. Pause. You are so wrong. What? You are so wrong. When you look at his missed cuts, Tiger yeah. Woods has missed fewer cuts in his career than Jordan Spieth has missed. And Jordan Spieth is fucking like 25, something like that. Tiger's 43. No, I'm not. I'm saying, though, like it, it's either it's like he's not going to have the lead and blow that shit if he's having oh, an he off never, day. He's the best front runner of all time. Yeah. It's yeah, harder. Yeah. He's not. He doesn't come from behind as much. Pause. He doesn't come from behind as much, but he has done it a few times. Like there was one time he was like seven shots back of Ernie Els or something or Matt Gogol at Pebble Beach, the course they're playing this week for the U.S. Open. Uh-huh. And he, he was like seven shots back with eight holes to go and he won. Damn. Yeah. Like he has come from behind to win, but... He's viewed as the he's closed like fourteen. Yeah, when he's got of the lead, it's a wrap. Fifteen, yeah, with the lead, it, but but no, he never, he really rarely misses cuts, man. He he has the cut record of like it's like a hundred and forty some odd cuts, which is insane. Yeah, like yeah, people don't know a lot of those little records he has are actually low key even more impressive than some of the bigger known records. <laughs> Yeah, there's probably so much shit they could dig up on, like, record. They that liter- is there's just... literally a Wikipedia page dedicated to, like, all of his accomplishments. Like, oh, it's probably a fucking, yeah, 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 it's probably incredible. List of Tiger Woods. I'm watching on ABC. They brought back this show that I like. It's, um, yeah. uh, pr- Press My Luck. You ever seen that? Press My Luck. Press My Meat, they should call it. <laughs> Where they're like, no whammies, no whammies, big bucks. And then they spin the wheel and there's like this little red monster that steals all the money. Never heard of that. Really? No. I think Chuck Woolery used to be the host. Oh, Chuck, no, 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 no. That dude Chuck is Woolery. super conservative. So is Pat Sajak. Fuck. <laughs> Something about game show hosts. They're mad conservative. No I wonder reason. what Alex Trebek is. He's probably conservative, nah, right? Nah, he's cool. I think he's probably a lefty. 
You think so? Definitely. I don't know. But I, but Pat Sajak and Chuck Woolery are like well known. Conservative. They had Clint Eastwood in uh, the Ellen DeGeneres uh, thing with David Letterman. He like has an office on the Warner Brothers set, and they just popped in because they saw his car there, and he just looked like so old. <laughs> and he's his... looked so old since like 2007. <laughs> no, but he looked like so old, and his pants were like legit up to like his nipples, <laughs> and like his hair was disheveled and shit. And like Ellen was like, "Oh, are you feeding the raccoons today?" And like he just was so old. <laughs> What is it about some people how they look super old at a certain point? Whereas I I know people are gonna get at me for this, but I don't think Trump looks his age. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think like I think you've said this before that the fact that he does like dye his hair and tan his skin is a good thing for him because he doesn't look however old he's supposed to look. Yeah, but some people like when they hit a certain age, they just look old as fuck. Whereas there are some people who just don't look old. I saw something on Twitter the other day. Somebody was like, this is my dad's 85-year-old birthday. And 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 the tweet said something like, go ahead, respond and tell me about how good black don't crack. It's a black dude who's 85. He looks legit like he's like 60 or 55. Really? Well, you've seen, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Clips? Or what the hell is his name? Uh, the rapper? Um, There's a rapper named Clips. No, Pharrell, Pharrell, Pharrell. Pharrell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pharrell looks like he's 12 years old. How old is he? Probably like 48 or 57. <laughs> no way. <laughs> he's got to be 48. 48 to 52 would be my guess. Pharrell age. There are a lot of people like Pharrell uh, four, Williams. 46. He's 46. Oh, fuck. He, he, doesn't, was... he doesn't look it. You're right. He doesn't look it. He looks like he's just like 17. Yeah. He's, but he's also like skinny and small and petite. So yeah, like but he, usually skinny actually doesn't like even though it's healthy healthier to be skinny. Usually skinny people don't age as well. Uh huh. That's why William Shatner said he put on like five pounds every year since he turned like sixty or something because he. Oh, he's super small. If William Shatner, like he's short. Oh, he's short. Okay. Um, yeah. But he's heavy now. And oh yeah. He said that he put on the weight so that you wouldn't see the wrinkles, and it worked. Uh, he doesn't look his age. Guy. He's probably an arrogant asshole in real life. <laughs> he probably is. I get that sense too. Just like a ho, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> But that was a brilliant move though on his part. He's like, I'm just going to put on some weight every year so that you don't see my fucking wrinkles. Yeah, it's a brilliant move until you're fat as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. There is a line. You can't get like super fat. Like, can I fucking put on weight to get rid of my wrinkles on my forehead and stuff? Oh, shout out to... <laughs> Andrew, man, he's making a dope comic. You got to retweet one of his things when he does it, man. I will. What is he? I, is he doing Kyle and Corin out of context? Or no, I'm yeah. sorry, Kyle and Corin, um, animated, animated series. Yeah, I've been going to his chats and like it's just like me, him, and like two other people. It reminds me of like old school secular talk. That's like it's right. sort of gangster. Like old school secular talk. I respect his shit. Like he just does his graphics. He's and, like, really good. Like, he's super talented. He's yeah. really talented, and those videos are really entertaining, and I always try to pump him out whenever he puts them up. Yeah, and he's cool. Like, I'll, like, write in the chat, and, like, uh, there's just one fucking follower, like, Elevator Man or some shit that subscribes and unsubscribes to my channel, so fuck that dude. <laughs> I was laughing so hard at the last, um, the animated Kyle. Yeah, that one was funny as talk. fuck, man. That was fucking hilarious. It was really good. And I good. follow Politicon on Instagram, and they keep teasing, like, a release date. Have they mentioned any, like, dates or anything or no, said but, anything? No, I mean, I just would have guessed it's in October again, but what the fuck do I know? But the way they, like, word it is just, like, any day now we're going to release the date or some shit. Or it's just, like, stop. No one, <laughs> like, just, you're going to release just some shit. Just say it. Just yeah. say it. Yeah. It was fucking weird. Fuck them. Yeah. But, yeah, if you're not fucking, like, I, my, I, if, I don't get if there's 4,100 subscribers, why there's not 4,100 fucking views on every single one of my fucking videos? If there's four, oh, dude, that's not the way it works. I know. I Look know, at I'm how many kidding. subs I have. I don't get that many views per video. What do I have? 670 or something I like that. Probably a sh- uh, sh- fucking dick ton of subscribers. Uh, imagine every video I I released <laughs> got 670 thousand views. It's not yeah, even close. Crazy. It's not even close. Yeah, no, I know. Um. I'm trying to get Vinny to do a chat. He's just a head case, man. Yeah, he's uh That'll be Has he been saying be yes surprised. to you and then not doing it a lot? Um he yeah, one time and I was like he saw Tommy did a chat and he was just like like he was like I, f- I f- like I fall asleep to this fucking shit, man. <laughs> like so what the fuck. 
What are you going to talk to me about? Cards? I don't know. I'm trying to like sort of be serious with it. I have shit written down, but he like texts me all this stupid shit. Like, find me someone that I can rob. Um, like, <laughs> how can I be serious with someone asking that type of shit? Oh, the audience is. I- I'm curious if the audience will like him or dislike him. I'm leaning towards dislike. I just, I know, I've known him. I mean, we've known him for so long that like I know him when he's not crazy, and then also know him when he's fucking crazy. You know, like yeah. I am going to tell him that like I, for our social studies, uh, regents, I copied off him cause he was mad smart. I think I got like an 86 or some shit still. Damn. He but, got, he got great. He, he did well in school. I yeah, never thought he of him was, like that. Like he was low key mad smart. It's just, he never like, he just went off the rails and that's like what I want to ask him. But then I don't know if I'm going to get a response back. Like, like, who like what bank can I fucking rob or like <laughs> whatever happened to Limo's hand? Yeah, I don't know how well the serious stuff will go with him. Yeah, so we'll see. He seems like the type to dodge. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He'll just dodge your questions. And I'm not like fucking Doctor Phil where I can get him to come out and fucking cry on my. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I haven't watched the Tommy Kaplan one yet, but is it good or is he? Is he um, like? I mean, he's Tommy I Kaplan. I have the ability to moisturize. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, he's Tommy Kaplan. Like, it's sort of cool. I mean, like, I thought it was good. I enjoyed talking to him. I think he's interesting as fuck. I told him he should write a book because I think he had an interesting story, you know? Yeah, he should. He should write a book for sure. It's definitely an interesting story. He's the perfect kid of the poker boom. You you froze again. You don't even look like you froze, but you froze. Mm, three. Oh, there we go. I Boom. was worried it wasn't going to come back that time. I know. It was funny because your face was paused in a way where it didn't look like you were frozen, but I knew you were frozen. Like, it wasn't like That's a frozen so- face. You know how a frozen face is a little off? Your shit just looked yeah. like you were just chilling. Oh. um, We haven't had bad connection in a while, so I think this was probably a like, reminder. Like, we can fuck with you guys if we want to. <laughs> Has YouTube, I saw um, Progressive Voice, they took down one of his shits. Have, has YouTube fucked with any of your shits? You're going crazy, man. Well, first of all, no, I, I haven't gotten happened? anything straight pulled down like the Progressive Voice did. That yeah. is some next level escalation shit where they what pulled happened to him? down a video of his. That was OD what they did? Yeah, they pulled down a video of his. Like, they were just yeah. like, no. And he was like, what the fuck? Like, you can't just yeah. pull it down. They were like, yes, That's we really- can. We just pulled it down. It's insanity. Like, they they were going They're on some now. power trip shit right now? Yes, uh, because, YouTube? and it all started because Steven Crowder, who's an asshole conservative, you know- did Is he just a political voice? What's that? Yeah, he's a political he, guy. He's a conservative- uh-huh conservative commentator and he did these segments going after this vox guy where he was like trying to debunk vox's arguments and Mm. but in the process of debunking trying to debunk this guy's arguments he he called him like a lispy queer and a gay mexican and all this stuff and he would say shit like that all the time so what this guy did carlos maza is he clipped out like all the times Steven Crowder said that shit to him, and then he did this long tweet storm about harassment on YouTube and YouTube's a cesspool, and they never enforce their terms of service, and they should really fucking, you know, enforce it and crack down or whatever. And then YouTube's response was basically like, all right. <laughs> so they demonetized Steven Crowder. They fucking demonetized and started pulling down all these other channels that were like Hi. borderline channels, but they pulled down people who like covered nazis and shit like not yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. nazis Just themselves they the were story. covering it you know the some exactly. history channels and shit it, it, they don't know what the fuck they're doing and yeah. but this is what always happens when somebody says like oh my god you have to start censoring and pulling stuff down they go okay and then they go nuts and they they use a fucking axe when they need to use a, a you know a scalpel and yeah but that's always how it's going to be. So next time somebody tries to beg YouTube for some sort of censorship, pump your brakes a little bit because it's not they're not going to go after only the people you want them to go after. They're going to fuck with everybody, man. Yeah, this is what yeah. happens. So this is what so happened like, with yeah, the first Adpocalypse. Sort of yeah. the, the first Adpocalypse, we fucking... There was like a, a, a craft ad or something that got on like a legit hateful Nazi clip or something like that. And then... They were like, okay, we're just going to fucking demonetize all of news and politics. 
because they were afraid of all the bad press that they were getting because Uh. all these mainstream media outlets were writing articles talking about how YouTube is funding extremism. They were like, the fuck we are. And then they just defunded all news and politics. And then we were thrown under the bus. And then it was a while took a long time to bounce back, and even when it bounced back, it was like 50% of the of the revenue that used to come in. It was just a fucking mess, man. It's terrible. YouTube sucks. They're the worst. I don't trust them. I don't trust them at all. Patreon. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like they just, like, they just panic and will do the most extreme, extreme shit in the beginning, and then they'll get all this blowback, and then they'll be like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and then, like, they'll sort of... Because they're trying to coddle to the advertisers. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Um... All right, so we got to wrap this up, but let me give everybody the final. We nailed it. Cheese it's seventy eight percent. Cheese nips twenty two percent. I thought it would be higher than seventy eight. Well, I said over seventy, and you said definitely over seventy. I th- I thought it was going to be in the nineties. No, nah, I knew just over seventy. I thought cheese it's seventy eight. Cheese nips twenty two. Now two thousand five hundred and seventy six votes. I will tell everybody right now. Run to the grocery store and get yourself some cheese nips and realize that they're not as bad as you think they are. Yeah, I'm going to try cheese nips. You know who's pretty um, good looking is uh, Tim Allen. Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth Banks. She's got blonde hair. I don't know what else she was in. Elizabeth Banks. I don't know who that is. Let's see. Mm, she was in some comedy movies. Has she? Yeah, she's been in some comedy movies. She's been in... Um... Mrs. Doubtfire? No, no, no. Uh, 40-Year-Old Virgin she was in. She was in 40-Year-Old Virgin? Yeah, she was like the drunk, horny girl at the end who would like fuck anybody. I don't remember her in 40-Year-Old the one Virgin. Driving, I want some fucking French toast. That was her? That was her. Oh. This guy's crying because he just won. I need to go on a game show, man. What I'd be fuck? a fucking what awesome fuck? game show. Who thinks that? <laughs> I, I would be I awesome need to on, a game, on show. a game show, man. <laughs> if anybody who listens, there's got to be someone. I always say this shit, but out of all the people that I listen to this shit, one, go subscribe to Corn's World because you probably haven't already, you fucks. And two, you've got to know someone who works like as a as a contractor or some shit they don't know on, like, anybody who works at a game show bro like put me on who like someone who um, listens has a cousin who's a light guy at who wants to be a millionaire that knows who the who the fucking no, recruiting agent is they don't and I could have win, i could win like at least five thousand dollars on who wants to be a millionaire because <laughs> those first couple questions is like i like how i like how we've asked the audience like a few things and there's a zero percent chance that there's anything connection they have for something like that remember when i asked them like yeah, oh, thing, get right? me on yeah, get me on the Augusta National, the Masters course. They, I can't. Well, I feel like that's harder because that's such a small. There's so many game shows. There's only one Masters. There's not that many game shows. There's like even what? if they get me on Tom and Dick's like cash grab on <laughs> channel seven hundred eighty nine. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, there's there's like maximum what everything. maximum ten game shows in the no world. Shot. Way more than that. Way more than ten. A hundred percent. Running, running right now. I'm not talking old school shits that don't fucking go anymore. There's mad. There's game shows. There's mad game shows. There's people who live in Germany that there's fucking German game shows. So you got to times everything by yeah, how many you countries can't speak there are. German, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. They should have put me on the German <laughs> game show. <laughs> All right, it's only got to be a U.S. show. I can maybe do some Spanish shit if, like, you I just can't say do like some Spanish shit. If it was a game show called like "See or No," and you just like say <laughs> yes or no to whatever they there's ask you, no, like, there's no game show called "See or No." <laughs> there's got to be a game show called "See or No" where they're just like, "Do you want to put your head in a bucket of like, like donkey shit?" And it's like "See or No," and I'm like "See," and I put my head in the donkey <laughs> shit, and I win like ten thousand dollars. <laughs> that's gotta be a real thing oh and if it's God. not a show and you have connects in any of your spanish speaking countries pitch that idea see or no uh, oh shit <laughs> see or no that's a fucking banger I'm about to copyright that shit or I'm about to write to Telemundo to get on that shit it's too late you already told everybody know, Somebody fuck. someone's just... gotta work for Telemundo and if I see that shit on TV <laughs> in two weeks work for Telemundo listen <laughs> Someone fucking knows. Someone knows somebody that works at Telemundo. Uh huh. 
there's like there's uh, three if uh, if you don't know someone you know someone who knows someone that works at telemundo well oh, shit mm. and that's a fact <laughs> that's not a fact <laughs> <laughs> That's the one fact if you take away this show is that someone who's listening uh, knows someone who watches Telemundo. Oh, that was so funny in so many ways. Oh. Over work Telemundo. Oh, okay. All right. On that note, guys, <laughs> we go, love you. Right now, go to Corrin's World and fucking like, watch every single video. There you go. You heard the man. Go to Corrin's World. Watch every single video. All right. We love you guys. We're out. Yeah. Peace.